Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about two separate tests, the ratio test and the root test. What you'll see with these tests, a little bit different than the integral test, divergence test, and the compar comparison tests, is that they have specific uses for certain types of expressions that are used in infinite series. So let's get right into it with the ratio test here. What the ratio test says, so we have this infinite series where we're being described by these a sub k's. We're going to define r. So r is this ratio for the ratio test. We let the limit as k goes to infinity. And what we're doing here is dividing succeeding terms. So we have a of k plus 1 divided by the previous term. We're taking the absolute value here to restrict r to a positive value. But what this is saying, what this r value will be, if it exists, it's saying that for large enough k, the ratio between successive terms has this common ratio between them. So, so if we have term 100 and 101, let's say they have a difference of about 2.5. And then if th this limit exists, it'd be the same for the 2000 and 2000th one terms. What the ratio test says is that if you're able to find this limit, this r value, if it's less than one, then the series will converge. It actually states that it converges absolutely, but we know absolute convergence implies convergence. If the R value is greater than one, then the series diverges. And if the R value equals one, we can't say anything about using this ratio test. As you look at this, you may feel this R value, this ratio is the same as the conversation or acts the same as with the geometric series. And that's actually what's going on. You're going to see that in both of these tests today, that this R value that we get out or this value we get from the test is describing for the long term of the sequence, it ends up acting. So for the tail of the sequence, or the, the series, uh, excuse me, it acts like a geometric series. I just wanna spend a little bit of time here outlining what the proof would look like. It's exactly kind of what I just spoke at. So let's just assume that this R value or this limit exists. What this means is that for large enough K, that the ratio between successive terms, so the ratio the absolute value a sub k plus one over the previous term approaches r. And what that is meaning generally, again, looking at the tail of this series, that at some point, given this limit right here, if we add up the tail of this sequence, it's actually very close to being equal to just a sub n plus r, this ratio between the terms, times a sub epsilon, a sub n. So again, the, the thing is, if I take this generally and divide it by this, and I get this ratio, what it means is, this is basically this first term, plus then just multiply by, by the r, this ratio. And if we wanna go two terms down, then we get r squared times this a sub n, plus all the way down the line. Thus, as said before, the tail of this series, or at some point, given this limit exists, at the tail of the series, the series that you're analyzing acts like a geometric series, and therefore we make the analysis based on that ratio, just like we did with the geometric series. As said previously, these two tests, the ratio and the root test that we'll introduce here in a second, have very specific applications when they're really important and really useful. For the ratio test, an often a really useful time to use the ratio test is when dealing with factorials. And you'll see why that's important to us very soon in this course. And just to remind you of factorials, if I had five factorial, that is five times four times three times two times one. And actually factorial is de defined as if you had k factorial, what that is is k times k minus one factorial. So what you do is you just split off that first factor right there and then multiply by this factorial of one unit smaller. Factorials are used actually throughout mathematics, but you've probably experienced factorials um, in combinations and permutations or general probability. Um, you're gonna see it again, as I said before, coming up soon. But importantly, what you're going to see is that if you're experiencing a series that has a factorial in it, it doesn't need to be in the denominator, it can be anywhere in the expression, the ratio test might make things really easy for you. So in using the ratio test, we're going to analyze this ratio right here. So R is going to equal the limit as K goes to infinity of the absolute value of the A sub K plus one. So I just need to take this expression 
and plug in k plus 1 into both sides. So it's 10 to the k plus 1, and this is k plus 1 factorial over uh, a sub k, which is just 10 to the k over k factorial. And this might seem intimidating at first. All we're going to need are some simple properties of factorials and of exponents to deal with this. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that this expression, all factors in the expression are explicitly positive. The k value are, are positive whole numbers. And so I can get rid of the absolute value signs. And I'll just rewrite this completely out. So this will be the limit as k goes to infinity. Um, and this divided by this, I'll flip this and multiply. So I get 10 k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial times, and then this is k factorial over 10 to the k. And now we just got to do the work of interacting these factors. Um, one thing I'll just make very clear, I try to make this clear in my first example, is this k plus 1 factorial. Importantly, I can rewrite this k plus 1 factorial as k plus 1, so that first factor, times k factorial. So this is just one bigger of a factorial than this. And so what happens is this only has that first factor and then the rest of it is exactly the same as that. Um, and so I can cancel that. So I'll show that real fast. Cancel the k factorial between that denominator and that denominator. And then when I interact these two right here, I just subtract these exponents. So k plus 10 to the k plus 1 divided by 10 to the k, subtracting k plus 1 from k. I just get left with 10 to the 1 power up here and cancels that out. So uh, this actually simplifies beautifully and simply. I now have the limit as k goes to infinity of 10 over k plus 1. And then applying the limit as k goes to infinity, constant on top of variable numer or denominator here, this limit goes to 0. Before I finish this example and apply the conclusion of the ratio test, I just want to emphasize this example in scene one. If I had this, this expression right here, this function, and tried to use the integral test, man, integrals and factorials don't play nicely, and that would be very difficult to deal with. Generally speaking, a variable factorial is difficult in, in most applications to actually do much with. But the beauty of this ratio test, and given its form right here, you'll see is this beautiful canceling. After I, I've applied this canceling, and this work will always be almost exactly the same, I have no more factorials left. I don't even have any more ex exponential factors left, and I can easily apply this limit. But now that we're here, let's do this, our work. We have found R. It exists. It's zero. It's less than one. And so we know the series converges. And now for the root test, we have different applications for this test. We have a different setup, but we have actually the same conclusion. And again, because it gets compared to a geometric series, as you'll see in my outline of the proof. But we have an infinite series described by these a sub k's. We're going to let rho equal the limit from k as k goes to infinity of the kth root of the absolute value of the kth term of this series. And as said before, we have exactly the same conclusions. And again, for the same reasons, as you'll see, we're going to compare this to a geometric series. What I want to say about this, and it's similar to the ratio test. So as we saw, the ratio test was really useful in dealing with these exponential factors and factorials. Because of the canceling that happens with that ratio, what you're going to find with the root test is, man, applying a root to an expression can get gnarly really fast. But if you have an exponential expression, specifically some kind of um, complicated expression or function that then is wrapped around to the k power, this actually will make your life a lot easier, as you will see in the example we do after the short proof. All right, so a short proof in defense of this test right here. Again, we're going to assume that this limit exists. We want to analyze what does this mean. What this means is for large enough k, It's true that rho um, basically equals the kth root of the absolute value of a sub k. But this statement right here, we know the relationship between exponents and roots. This is exactly the same thing as saying that rho to the k 
equals the absolute value of a sub k. Well, if that's true, if we look at the tail of this series, so after this k that was described by this limit right here, we know then that the series after that a sub k is basically, is, can be estimated very accurately as the row to the k, row to the k plus one, plus row to the k plus two. So for large enough k, a tail of our series can be estimated by this series right here, which is another geometric series. Again, because the ratio between each of these terms is just rho. So this, if you multiply this by rho, you get k plus one, multiply by rho again, k plus two. So again, if this limit exists, what it means is that the nature of the series that you're looking at, the tail of it acts like a geometric series. Therefore, we analyze it, the divergence or convergence, the same way as a geometric series. All right, let's now tackle example using the root test. What I really hope after this video is it becomes obvious when you would use these two tests. At some point in this class, as you're studying these infinite series, you're like, man, there's so many different things I can apply, but it should be fairly obvious what you should try given the situation. When I look at this infinite series right here, in my head, I'm just like, for sure, the first thing I'm gonna try is the root test. It's because this exponent of k on the outside. So it has this exponential nature and be really hard to analyze this with our other methods. But using the root test, you're going to see that this root, when applied to this, makes the analysis actually pretty dang easy. All right, so using the root test, I'm just gonna throw in this a sub k expression right into this row statement. Um, one of the more difficult things to deal with will be the absolute value, but we need to use our intuition or our knowledge of absolute values to deal with this. So importantly remember, k is always going to be a positive number. And so to, if I wanna deal with this absolute value right here, I need to write the version of this that will always be positive. Um, and in this case, if k is one or larger, which it is, um, this will be the, I need the absolute value of this numerator right here. The denominator will always be positive. So I need the opposite of this numerator, which will be output by the absolute value. And so um, importantly right here, if I add a negative to these terms, so I take the opposite of this, what well, I'll get, I'll just rewrite it this way. So it's always the easiest way to deal with it. I'll just write it as 4k squared minus three. Now this will be just exactly the opposite of that original numerator right here, except for this will strictly output positive values. So that's me applying the absolute value to this expression, um, but I'm still being raised to the k power, and I have the kth root right here, and I obviously am still taking the limit as k goes to infinity. Well, that makes things great. That really was the only difficult part was doing with that absolute value. I now have the kth root, which cancels with the exponent of k. And again, that's my real kind of sell for this example, is that I knew the root test had potential for really helping me out determine uh, the convergence of this series because of that action right there after I dealt with the absolute value. And so now what I'm left with is the limit as k goes to infinity of 4k squared minus 3 over 7k squared plus six. We know that this limit, given this rational expression right here, will uh, be the ratio of these lead coefficients because the, the degrees are exactly the same. So this equals four sevenths, excuse me, four sevenths. Thus, given by the root test, this series converges. Both the ratio and the root test are very similar in a lot of different ways. Um, what we're looking at is a limit statement, and once we look at that statement, if the limit exists, we analyze it in exactly the same way as the geometric series. Hopefully my little outlines in my proofs, I definitely didn't give full rigorous proofs there, giving you an idea of what's going on. And in both cases, what the statement is, if that limit exists, then towards the tail of this series, or so at some given point, given that limit exists, the terms or the the action between the terms becomes just different by this ratio, this, this row or this R value, and thus the tail of the series acts like a geometric series, and thus the convergence of this infinite series you're looking at follows the pattern of the convergence of a geometric series. And finally, to emphasize this one more time, is that there's definitely times to use the ratio test, 
For me, it's generally when you're looking at exponential expressions or when you're looking at factorials, I would right away be like, okay, I'm gonna try the ratio test to simplify my life. Because what you want is when you apply the test, like in this case right here, you want it to simplify the expression that you're looking at to make your analysis easier. For a ratio test that makes factorials get easier after using the ratio test or exponential expressions. And in the case here for the root test, I'm looking at this, this gnarly exponential that has a lot of jazz going on the inside. When I apply the root test, I get rid of that exponent or that exponential expression part, and I just then can analyze the inside of the expression.